You describe the inflows, outflows data I've just been through as an encouraging signal today, the day of your, of your AGM. Why are you encouraged by what you see at the moment? Uh, and, and thank you, and it's always a pleasure to be here. Um, I, I think it's encouraging because, you know, we, during so much turbulence, our clients are remaining, I think, relatively calm. Our performance has, has held up. And I think to see uh, confidence from our clients of sticking with us and um, uh, sending us some new money, I, th I think, is, is, is encouraging. Why do you think they're doing that? Do you think they want to buy the dip right now? Is that uh, what it's all about? Is there FOMO? Are people worried that they missed it? If we see another dip, do you think you'll get more? Uh, no, I think most of our clients are, are long term. Uh, and I think they're taking a view to some extent on uh, the longer term pace of recovery. So for sure, there's, uh, there's opportunity. I think the other thing that's going on is we are seeing a drift, of course, to uh, money market funds where houses with good performance and strong balance sheets are, uh, are, is seen as, as important. So I think it's about confidence in the long term. I don't get any sense of our client base uh, making uh, short term decisions. Uh, they are thinking about uh, the medium, uh, the medium term. Uh, Keith, you also say in your statement today around the AGM that the external environment may impact the phasing of some activities over this year. What what impact are you talking about there? What phasing? I think it, I think it's modest. So I mean, obviously. Over the last uh, seven or eight weeks, we've moved to outside Asia Pacific, having 99% uh, of our people uh, working, uh, working from home. Uh, we have still got quite a, heavy, a lot of heavy lifting to do. I think that's broadly on track, but inevitably, as you put in uh, different uh, elements of, 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 of of, of integration and process, you know, that that is just going to take a bit of a rework. But I think uh, uh, as far as I can see today and, and, and eight, eight weeks into uh, this crisis, uh, that feels like it's going to be modest. What do your clients uh, who normally would be investing in real estate think about this whole working from home situation, Keith? Because so many companies, I'm sure Standard Life Aberdeen is among them, have had great success working from home and, and realize that the overhead of uh, commercial retail may be a little bit too much. Yeah, so, so I think one of the things we, we have learned is that um, the days, I suspect, of those old business continuity sites uh, where you had a lot of space for disaster recovery have gone because we threw uh, modern technology and the ability of our people to make that technology work, uh, they, can, uh, they can work from home. Uh, it remains to be seen, uh, of course, whether that is something which, in terms of the communities that people operate in and the way in which people want human connection, uh, the full extent to which that will have an impact. I do suspect that uh, going forward, as we think about the return to work, the ergonomics of the workplace are going to uh, are going to change. These big dealing room floor plans uh, may uh, may change uh, may change forever. So certainly, you know, we're thinking not just about uh, how we can uh, get our people back, but actually, what does that mean for the shape? of the ergonomics within a business. And obviously that's gonna have a knock on effect on the, uh, the demand for property space in the medium, medium term. So we'll see, I think, how this, yes. how this lands over, over the next few months. So it has an impact on the demand for property space, Keith. Does it also have an impact then on the real estate funds that Matt was talking about? I mean, what about open-ended property funds? Are we ever going to get sound valuations for those? Oh, we, 
we will, uh, I think, eventually when uh, when markets uh, when markets normalise. But as we've seen uh, from you know news overnight from South Korea, etc., this is going to be, I think, a uh, a long haul, and these 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 difficult times are going to remain uh, in 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 place. So I'm sure you know we. Uh, the property valuers uh, are working with the regulators to make sure that we can get uh, the valuation for property funds on a uh, on a sound uh, on a sound basis. And I think, as I've said several times before, I think we will come out of this crisis with uh, some different wrappers uh, for, uh, for 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 property funds in the short run. I think this is uh, all about making sure that we do the right thing for clients and also uh, attempt to do the right thing for tenants in these in these difficult uh, difficult times. What do your clients think about fixed income uh, funds right now, Keith? Or, or, or what do you expect to happen with fixed income funds? I, I think what you're going to see is, um, you know, we saw quite a strong improvement in the rebound in credit uh, throughout April and a real focus on the quality names uh, and uh, really strong, uh, really strong balance sheets. So I think that's going to be uh, a, a major, uh, a major differentiator uh, as we go forward. There is no doubt in my mind that one product of uh, the COVID crisis is obviously going to be a recession. You're going to have a prolonged period of very, very low interest rates at the short and, uh, and the long end. And so there will be a reach for yield. But I suspect that as a result of what happened in March, the focus on quality and resilience of the balance sheet uh, will be... Uh, of increased performance uh, importance, and that's going to stay with us for some time. And Keith, how does all of that play out in the battle of active versus passive? You've talked a lot about your new active business. How is that developing? A, a broader focus of uh, on a broader set of products and regions than maybe traditional active. What what about the new active side? I, I think now is the time. Now is absolutely the time for new active. Uh, and one thing I think that's really important to get across as a message, though, is you will not see the benefit of, 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 of new active coming through in performance uh, either next month or over the next quarter. Uh, active managers at the moment are spending their time uh, doing the research, looking at the names, working out who's going to be a survivor, who's going to be a winner, who might need... Uh, a bit of capital to, 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 to do that. So I think the benefits of active management will reveal themselves over the next couple of, uh, the next couple of years. And, and active management, in, in my view at the moment, it, it, is, it is time for high quality stock picking. As you, you know, as you answer that, it makes me think also of the possibility of M&A for you, for your business. When you look out there, and you see competitors that may not be so steady on their feet right now in a business area, um, you want to bulk up at SLA. Um, do you see anything you like? Are there, you know, which business areas do you want to improve with M&A now that you have these opportunities? Which regions do you want to beef up? So I know the first thing to say is we're, we're really not that interested in, uh, in bulk. Uh, if there's an issue, it's about is about scale, and it's about thinking about where you can add to your um, uh, investment capabilities, so that you can continue to diversify your revenue streams and uh, and support uh, support clients. So I think um, you know we're in the middle of a bear market rally at the moment. Uh, and I suspect that, uh, you know, there's a bit more noise and a bit more volatility to come uh, down, uh, down, down the track. 
So the real time to be thinking about what you might or might not do is, is probably in the second half, of, uh, second half of the year. I have to say, in the short run, given the depth and the unparalleled nature of this, this crisis, uh, my focus is really on uh, keeping my people uh, safe, uh, both in the distributed estates and, 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 and as we think about the return to work, and making sure that if they're safe, they can provide uh, high quality uh, performance and service uh, for our uh, for our clients, and, and that's pretty much where our our, our focus is in the short term.